In the last module, we did consider the constant velocity particle model and the constant acceleration particle model for an object moving along a straight line, which was strictly a one-dimensional motion. Now, in this particular model, the prime objective is for us to extend what we covered in the last module into a much more generalized case where objects are moving in both two and three dimensions. You see, the, the last module was more or less limited. Now we're going to extend what we did to apply to almost any kind of motion. In other words, we will extend the concepts of position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration into two and uh, three dimensions. So the question I have for you is, how do we define the position of an object in three dimensions? Just like you saw in the last module, in order for us to define the position of an object, we need to define a coordinate system. While there are several types of coordinate systems, in this particular module, we are going to zoom in in one, we call it the Cartesian coordinate system. Now the Cartesian coordinate system consists of three axes. The Y, the X, under the z axis. It is worthwhile for you to understand that the unit vector along the x direction is i, the unit vector along the j direction, along the y direction is j, and the unit vector along the z direction is k. Now, just to make this, help you visualize this, I'm going to superimpose a box on this. Now we have our coordinate system. You have the y axis, the x axis, and the z axis. Now suppose we have an object, let's say an object P, at this position P, let me call this P initial. How do we define the position of that object? To define the position of this object P, we will draw a position vector from the origin O to the point P. This position vector is R, let us call this Ri, and it is a function of time. So you will recognize that R has an X component, it has a Y component, and a Z component. So the position vector of this particle can be written as R, which is a function of time. It's going to be X, T, I, plus Y of T, J, plus Z sub T K. So this represents the position vector of the particle. Now let's suppose that this particle moves along a path like that. Let's say it moves from this position P1 to a new position P final, which is a function of time. So you have here R final, still a function of time. And this is the direction of motion. So we call this the path or 
the, traje the trajectory of the particle. So this would mean that you will have the position vector for the initial point, which is Ri. This is I and I. And the position vector Rf for the final point will be equal to Xf ti plus yf j plus zf k. The change in position defines what we call displacement. In other words, the displacement of an object delta r is simply the final position minus the initial position. The final position minus the initial position. This is the final position and this is the initial position. What that means is delta R, therefore, will be equal to x final minus x initial i plus y final minus y initial j plus z final minus z initial k. This defines the displacement of the particle. It defines the displacement of the particle. It is very crucial for you to understand that the displacement of the particle depends only on the initial and the final point. That means that the the path that the object takes between the initial and the final point really doesn't matter. What matters is just the initial and the final point. That's why the displacement in thermodynamic terms is called is a state quantity. So This represents delta x, this represents delta y, and this represents delta z. So that would imply that delta r simply is delta xi plus delta yj plus delta z k. This is another way of representing the displacement of the particle. Before we move on, bear with me that displacement is a vector because the displacement of a particle is the change in position in a particular direction which means that the displacement of this particle has both a magnitude and a, a direction. 